Uh, when did you first meet Jackie? Oh, uh, Jack, the courtship between uh, Jack and Jackie must have begun uh, in uh, the summer of 53. I don't remember the exact date. And but she came, she came to the office with him once. And, uh, and, what, and, and did other women come to the office to see him too? I mean, were you used no. to uh, a lot of girlfriends in no. his life? No. No? That doesn't mean there weren't, you just weren't meeting them. Or did Jackie, or did you know Jackie was the one by the fact that she came to the office? I knew she was the one by the fact they became engaged. Okay, well, that's the <laughs> uh, did, did their, did their um, relationship surprise you, or did she seem to you to be the match for him? I mean, did you get it the way people have always seemed to get it, that they seem like such a pair? Oh, I, uh, for, uh, what, 50 years, I uh, thought Jackie was the most wonderful woman in the world. And I miss her still and still think she was wonderful. You, um, I would, my impression would be that your relationship with her became closer and better after his death. That's true. That in the White House she was around and friendly but distant. Yes, she was, uh, yes, distant is, is exactly right. Uh, she was the president's uh, wife. She uh, stayed in the East Wing. She attended to her little children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, although we certainly had uh, mutual uh, respect and affection, uh, was not uh, that close mm -hmm. until after Jack was gone. Um, and you make a point uh, of saying that you uh, you really weren't part of what the Georgetown scene of the Kennedy era. You you, you didn't you didn't socialize with the with the the set the Kennedy set that much. That's true. Um, and and you didn't mind. I wasn't that. there to be his uh, drinking companion. Right. I didn't drink. You didn't I drink. I was there to be his uh, policy and speech advisor. But you had no desire to be no. in that in that world. You saw it happening around you though and I gather there were times that, I mean you talk about going to Joe Alsop's, you talk about going to Mrs. Graham's, you tell a wonderful story about a woman named Mahoney, was it Frances ha. Mahoney? Florence, Florence Mahoney. Florence Mahoney. And she uh, lived to be 103 and was one of the great ladies of Washington <laughs> and uh, died not that many years ago. She did something that, uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis that could not happen today. Uh, she sent you. It could. She sent you dinner. She sent you dinner at the White House, That's and you actually true. received it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Secret Service tested it on the way in. I, I doubt that. I just I thought that I, I I almost have a vision of her having it delivered right to the gate and it being uh, and it being taken up to uh, your desk. Um, Jackie, um, when you were writing your book Kennedy, when you wrote your first book on Kennedy, she sent you. Uh, marvelous notes um, that I thought were very interesting, her, her, her particular changes she wanted you to make. They, 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 they weren't heavy-handed, but they were very precise. She had very precise feelings about certain things. Do you, do you want to talk about that? I was living at Hyannisport, where Jackie had her home still at that time, when I finished uh, my manuscript mm -hmm. on my first big book, Kennedy. And I asked her if she would like to uh, read it, not because I was submitting it to censorship, right. but because there were some things that she knew more than I did. Uh, and she made many, many corrections and suggestions, none of which involved policy or uh, substance in any way, but all of which were quite important for accuracy, such as uh, I, know, I, mean, I had one statement about uh, uh, Jack uh, being uh, not that big a drinker, but occasionally having a vodka in the afternoon. She wrote in the margin, never. <laughs> and one thing she was very insistent upon was when I referred to, to the little boy yes. as John John, yeah, and she said, please do not use that name. He hates it. He's kidded about it. It's a babyish name, and Jack and I never used it. I'm not so sure that was uh, 
Uh, not true, so sure that's but, true, but uh, nevertheless, I uh, changed it. In her, but in her much more important for historians today are what she asked me to add or change regarding how I or Jack uh, felt about LBJ, and I was taken aback by her lack of a respect for him. By her lack of respect for LBJ. Yes. But LBJ was good to her, wasn't he? I'm asking. From your mouth to LBJ's ear. <laughs> he was not good to her. Well, of course he was good to her if you... He needed her. If you think uh, honeyed... Uh, uh, phone conversations are the sum total of being good. He let her stay a few extra days uh, in the White House. He at all times expressed uh, solicitation and uh, concern. But um, when you've seen your husband's brains blown to bits in your own lap, uh, you need more than that. What, what could he have done differently? I mean, in terms that he couldn't have really let her stay at the White House. No, either. I don't know what he could have done differently. I'm not uh, complaining. I didn't complain. You, you in the made book. your own peace with LBJ. So to speak. So to speak. I mean, you didn't stay with him, but. I stayed three months. You stayed. I stayed in long enough to make certain that the Kennedy legislative program, including civil rights, went forward, and it did. And I felt I had to. It was very painful for you. I mean, not just emotionally, but you could feel the tide turning to this new administration, and you didn't no. want to be there. Uh, no, I don't think that's the way I put it. I, I simply felt that uh, even though I had the same title, the same office, mm -hmm. the same pay, pretty paltry in those days, and uh, the uh, pretty much uh, same access to the president, not quite, but I knew it was, my job was different because my job had uh, been the outcome uh, or the evolution of 11 years with uh, JFK and the bond between us, which meant I was involved in almost everything and uh, did not have to uh, have anything I wrote or decided uh, cleared uh, by anyone other than uh, JFK. And once uh, President Johnson took over, he brought in his own people like Bill Moyers and George Reedy, uh, Walter Jenkins, and they entitled, they were entitled to have yeah. the kind of relationship that I had once had, and, and including all the perquisites that went with that. So I felt it was really more a matter of fairness uh, to them and to the new president if I left because JFK and I had spoken more than once about writing a book mm -hmm. about his presidency and I felt I ought to uh, get on with write that. that book. Write that book. And that, and that was, that, it was an honest and also good excuse. It was a great way to get out of town. You were talking uh, about something else when you said this. You were talking about when Carter um, uh, had nominated you for CIA director, which did not go the way you wanted it to. But you said, you said, when it's over in Washington, it's over. That's for sure. <laughs> when you're out, you're out. And you might as well leave town, right? <laughs> I didn't want to be a lobbyist. No. No. Well. Um, With all respect to the lobbyists who are here. Yes. <laughs> there are a few. Um, and another thing, Jackie, uh, uh, was, was, was commenting to you about was Caroline. She wanted you to ease up on Caroline um, in your in your memoir, Kennedy. Oh, there was a. Uh, you, did, I've already forgotten what it was. Something about Caroline and the press. Yeah, that she was said no photographs or something like that. And, no uh, photographers. Or, yes, and Jackie said, "Don't blame her." Uh, she learned she that learned from that. her parents. Yeah, she, yeah, exactly. But she went on to say, Caroline is far more sensitive and fragile than people realize. 